Do you think you have scoliosis? What are the symptoms associated with scoliosis? Scoliosis is a very complex problem when it's associated with the spine and the body. First thing you want to understand when we look at scoliosis is what is it? And we know scoliosis is defined as a lateral curvature of the spine of 10 degrees or more with rotation. If there's no rotation in the spine, that means it's not scoliosis and some type of postural deviation or something called postural scoliosis. Scoliosis is defined into specific severities of scoliosis, meaning mild, moderate, or severe. A mild scoliosis or curvatures that are between 10 degrees or a 25 degree Cobb angle, and a Cobb angle is the measurement that you use to measure a scoliosis on an x-ray. A moderate scoliosis is a Cobb angle measurement between 25 and 40 degrees, and severe scoliosis is 40 degrees and greater. I also have this fourth category, which I call very severe scoliosis, and this is when Cobb angle measurements can be of 80 degrees or greater. So when we talk about scoliosis, we want to talk about two main types. We talk about scoliosis in children and scoliosis in adults. For this video, when I talk about childhood scoliosis, I'm talking about something called adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, meaning unknown cause. We don't know why the scoliosis is happening, and there's multiple theories on why adolescent scoliosis can happen. How, and there's other types of adolescent scoliosis that actually have causes like neuromuscular or congenital. For this video, we're not talking about those. We're just talking about adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. And what's the difference between that and when it comes to adult scoliosis? And what are the, some of the signs or symptoms that are associated with both these types? Well, first of all, if somebody has a mild scoliosis, what are the first things they notice, whether it be in an adolescent scoliosis or whether it be in an adult scoliosis? The most common thing, it's, it's posture. It's the way the clothes fits and how, they're, how it's fitting on their body. You know, they may see balance, uh, change in balance and coordination, and that happens because as the spine shifts and the curve happens, it affects something called proprioception, which is where their body is in space relative to the other parts of their body. It can affect how somebody walks because as the scoliosis progresses, it can affect the balance of their pelvis and how the, the pelvic engages in that gait motion. Uneven posture is something that's very common. You're gonna see uneven shoulders, uneven hips. You're gonna see arms that are not hanging evenly to the side, meaning one side could hang lower, one side, one arm can be further out from the body than the other. The most classic sign when it comes to scoliosis is rib protrusion, meaning from the back. When somebody bends forward, they look forward, they see ribs that would stick more back or more posterior relative to the other side. And the most common side that would stick posterior or stick back would be the right side. So they have the right side sticking back and the left side sticking forward. There could also be a tilting appearance, meaning that the, the torso feels like it's tilted relative to the body below. Legs can also appear to look like different lengths, meaning that people's pants are not fitting right. One side of the pants would be look, fit lower on their shoes for their, than the other side. Hips can be uneven. You can see the waist side, one side look more wasty or have a bigger waist and one side be very, very flat. We can see asymmetrical shoulder blades. We also tend to feel pain. However, when it comes to pain and adolescent scoliosis, it's not common. And if they feel pain, it's just a dull ache at the site of scoliosis or site of curvature. So a lot of kids don't feel a ton of pain. And unfortunately, since they don't feel a ton of pain regarding scoliosis, scoliosis can be undiagnosed in children. And a lot of times they can be blown off because a lot of times the parents would say, well, my child doesn't feel any pain. I'm not gonna really worry about it. But we don't expect kids to have pain because of scoliosis. In fact, it's very uncommon for adolescent scoliosis patients to actually experience pain. However, the opposite is true for an adult patient. Adult patients have pain much more frequently than, uh, than their adolescent counterparts. And the reason why is because when an adolescent, what's causing their curve to worsen it's because they're growing. And this growth that causes the curve to worsen, it's elongating to the body. It's making the, bon uh, the, the body longer. So it's causing no compression to the spine. What makes an adult case progress over time, it's gravity compressing down on their body, which is increasing the curve. This compression leads to compression of the nerves, the tissues that exit the spine, which almost always will lead to pain at some point. So therefore, that's why adults will feel pain and children do not, okay? In fact, there's no relationship between the size of curve and how much pain somebody feels. It's how much the curve progresses as an adult, which is what most likely what's gonna cause their pain. 
Outside of pain, the most common thing that people are worried about, in fact, this is why a lot of people seek surgery for scoliosis, is the question is, is one of the symptoms of scoliosis is that the spine is gonna start pressing on my heart or my lungs and lead to lung or heart failure. In fact, that was the number one reason why they started doing scoliosis surgeries 50, 60 years ago, because they thought that if curves got to a certain size, they were gonna press on a heart or a lung and cause death. And the fact is that's very, very rare. It doesn't, ha it doesn't happen uh, very often. In fact, the biggest scoliosis I've seen is 155 degrees in a child, and that child was up and walking and going to school, graduated high school, went off to college, got a job, and still doing relatively fine, and she has over 100 degree scoliosis. And so therefore, if the spine was gonna press on a lung or heart, it would have happened to her, and it didn't. In fact, that's the reason why they started considering doing scoliosis surgery around 40 degrees, 45 degrees, because that's when they thought that's actually when it started. But what data has suggested, in recent data, is that this type of manifestation doesn't even begin to start to happen to around 80 degrees. And in most cases, these interferences with cardiovascular or lung function are considered functional impairments, meaning the patient will never know. They're not gonna feel any difference sitting around in their normal activity days of life, that they have any difference with the ability to breathe or cardiovascular malfunction. They'll have no effect on their daily, daily lives in, day in and day out. So we really don't know when it actually starts happening. They, they think it starts occurring around over 80 degrees, they're almost a little bit more sure when it starts occurring over 100 to 115, 120 degrees, but it's much more, much greater than just over 40 or 45. So the only way you really know is if the spine is affecting your lungs or heart is to actually have a cardiovascular functional profile and actually have it tested because some people can start developing it earlier, some people can start developing it much later in the size of curve. It's not related to the size of curve, it's related to that patient only. So. What do you do if you suspect you have scoliosis or a friend or loved one have scoliosis? The first thing is that you want to do is go ahead and get screened. And the screening, the first step is checking posture. Have somebody evaluate your posture, looking at your shoulders, your ribs, your waist, looking at all the signs that could possibly be associated with scoliosis physically. If you find those postural findings, the very next step is to get an x-ray and have an x-ray properly taken and also measured and evaluated by somebody who knows how to measure scoliosis angles. If you're confirmed that you do actually have scoliosis, then your next step is that you start being proactive regarding scoliosis. Because we know one thing for sure is that scoliosis almost always progresses. We just don't know how fast it's gonna progress. It could progress slow, it could progress fast, but it's progressing. And as curves get bigger, they, they tend to want to get bigger faster. So keeping a curve small is always beneficial to your health and well-being over your entire life. So research all your options and be very proactive. When it comes to choosing who your provider is, definitely choose somebody who's experienced in taking care of scoliosis patients in all categories. Meaning if you're seeing, if you're a child or you're, it's your son or your daughter, make sure you have somebody that knows how to deal with kids with that types of scoliosis and knows what's gonna happen as the kid continues to grow and continue to possibly progress. If you're a middle-aged adult with scoliosis, find somebody that knows what they're doing when it comes to middle-aged adults or even an elderly. Because having somebody who's experienced in treating that type of scoliosis is also important. Whether it's an adult case or an adolescent case, whether you have pain or you don't have pain, managing the scoliosis early and keeping it small is by far the best advice I can give you, being proactive towards that process will produce the very best results for you long term. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.